Hello and welcome to a special edition of Focus One. Today we're going to be talking about an exciting new initiative called the Consortium of Colleges on the Creative Coast. Now this consortium involves six local institutions on the Creative Coast. FSU at the Ringling, Eckerd College, New College of Florida, the Ringling School of Art and Design, State College of Florida, and the University of uh, South Florida at Sarasota Manatee. Now within these six institutions there are 522 outstanding faculty and over 20,000 students. Today we have representatives of the six institutions and we're going to tell you a little bit more about this, uh, this initiative. Let me start by introducing, we'll go, we'll go um, left to right. First uh, to my left, Dr. Don Eastman, President of Eckerd College. Welcome. And my own President, Dr. Donald uh, O'Shea. President of New College of Florida. Dr. Carol Propsfield, President of State College of Florida. Dr. Larry Thompson, President of the Ringling School of Art and Design. Um, sorry. Dr. Sandra Stone, President of the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee. And Stephen High, Executive Director of the Ringling. Welcome to the beautiful spot by the bay. Uh, Don, I'm going to start with you. Uh, can you just, you know, very briefly give us an overview of how this is going to work? Okay, so, well, as you've seen, we're six different institutions. We um, don't compete, um, but we're all strong and we're um, very complimentary in what we offer students. Um, and what we're thinking of here is that um, by sharing faculty, by sharing students, allowing students at any institution to enroll at any other institution. Um, we create vastly more opportunities for our students. Um, we create a kind of um, critical mass in a variety of academic disciplines. Um, we um, also create an opportunity um, to, for each of our colleges, although we're not, none of us is huge, except perhaps, um, well, the, um, none of us is huge. Together, though, we're, we have a lot of students. As you mentioned, 500 faculty, 20,000 students. So that's what we're about. Let me press on that, that critical mass a little bit more. I'll start, um, uh, Dr. Eastman, uh, with you. When you look at uh, these six institutions together, you're covering areas of I mean, a lot of strength in the STEM area. You also have traditional uh, liberal arts, uh, broader arts uh, uh, and music theater, uh, business, um, but you can't really find all of that at any one of your particular institutions. And so from the vantage point of your particular institution, just maybe a couple of comments on um, what do you think this offers your students? They don't quite get, uh, they don't have an opportunity at your particular institution. And then what do you think is some of your core competencies, sort of the key contributions that you're making to this consortium? I'll start with you. Well, even though we do have all of those areas uh, at our college, we don't have the subspecialties that these colleges have. So I have excellent people in math, but I don't have some of the folks I, that uh, they have at New College. Mm -hmm. I have some wonderful uh, people in, in, in painting and drawing, but I don't have the expertise that they have at the Ringling Design School. Uh, and each one of these institutions offers subspecialties that are no one institution can have. So we feel very good about having access to those. Uh, we provide, uh, half of our students are science majors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some facilities and some expertise in the science areas that uh, some of these institutions don't have. So the ability uh, to create an organizational structure which is going to help students get from one set of expertise to another to minimize the bureaucracy that they have to go through to uh, take advantage of that is really a, it's, it's the first job of this uh, consortium uh, and certainly worth doing to serve the students uh, throughout the 
uh, creative coast area. Dr. O'Shea, I'm going to skip over you because yeah. we talked before. I'm just uh, anything in particular, uh, Dr. Probesfield. You know. Well, for the students at the State College of Florida, I think the opportunity to participate in a broader way in the programming that's offered at my fellow institutions is uh, obviously enrichment for them. And at the State College of Florida, we offer a lot of workforce programs. Um, for example, um, students can get a certificate and license in various risk management aspects. Mm -hmm. And we have a very, very, very strong gen ed core that prepares students for careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. So I think what we can bring to this consortium is that real strong core. And um, what we hope we able to get for our students is the opportunity to participate in the much more specialty sub programs, as uh, Dr. Eastman had mentioned. And I think in general, together, we can provide the synergy uh, that no one of us can offer on our own, as, as you said, and none of us have the complete complement of what we're doing here together. So that, um, again, it's that synergy that we couldn't do on our own, not to mention the opportunities for our faculty. And we have faculty that are specialized in very um, specific areas, largely in developmental ed. Um, is one of our big areas. But I think that's something that we also um, can work with some of the other institutions and how we can incorporate that into um, special needs that their students might have in areas and vice versa. So um, I think there's a lot that each of us bring to the table and we're looking forward to even more as time goes on. Dr. Thompson, I'll even make it more precise. Just if you had to pick one thing, you know, what's the, what's the, the one thing you get from this and what's the key thing that you, that you put I think on? that the main thing that we, we get as an art and design college is that we're, we are very specialized in terms of what we do. We also teach the liberal arts and so on and so forth and teach science, but it's not at the in depth. So these institutions will allow, for example, our students to, who may want to take foreign languages and we don't offer foreign languages, so they'll be able to take foreign languages at another institution, um, any one of these who do offer it. So it's a matter of broadening, in many ways, the curriculum without the institution itself mm -hmm. having to add more, more cost to it because we have all these other institutions so close by um, that can be a benefit to the students. Dr. Stone? I think one of the things that uh, we have to offer are probably more specialized professional programs. Uh, we have a College of Hospitality and Tourism Leadership. Uh, we have an AACSB accredited business college that incorporates an IT program that's very strong. Uh, we have a, an education college and it also in, incorporates a partnership for arts integrated teaching which is a unique way to go about preparing students to teach and we have a biology program in partnership with Moat Marine Labs. So I think those are some of our signature programs that we can offer. And I think our students then have an opportunity, um, as Larry was saying, to get languages. We, we are very limited in the languages that we offer. And like from Carroll's institution, they can get arts, which we don't have a lot to offer there either right now. So mm -hmm. I think it, it does allow our students to have a, a broader exposure to uh, different disciplines. Thank you, Mr. High. Uh, every major university has a major art museum and uh, with the Ringling we bring to the consortium uh, really a world-class institution in art but also in history and culture and our role within this consortium is really we believe as a convener as a place where students can come and gather to learn and have informal learning experiences within our gallery spaces uh, what we get out of this consortium is, uh, is the opportunity to explore collaborations across all these different institutions and also the opportunity to uh, combine resources, things that are more difficult for us to do alone, we can do in, in partnership with some of these other colleges uh, and we end up uh, improving across the board. Dr. Stone, I want to come back to you on just on the marketing side. So, I mean, I can imagine uh, sitting here that, well, we'll see how this goes. But for the most part, um, there's a lot to offer in our, our own institutions. When you have queries on the part of uh, prospective students and or visits, um, has the C4 kind of percolated up to be part of the pitch that you're making to prospective students or, or not yet? Um, and if not yet, uh, how much potential do you see? branding this area, a lot of people wouldn't look at, 
you know, Sarasota as a college town. But again, if collectively you look at the, the 500 plus faculty, all that these institutions have to offer, um, maybe there is some potential for, you know, for, for expanding that C4 brand. Sure. And we haven't marketed it broadly yet because we're still working out the details and we haven't really quite gotten there. But um, once we do, I think it will be a real nice recruiting tool for us because particularly for us, we're not, uh, we're not residential. So our draw is from people that are within commuting distance. And so when they look then not only at just what they can get from our institution, but what might be available to them across all of our institutions, I think it makes it more attractive for students to want to stay local. So I think that will help us a lot. I'd like to add, uh, Sandra, to what you said, because I agree with you on that point. It'll help us as well in recruiting, because now we have other major institutions that we can, we can talk about when we're talking to students that they can take advantage of. But the big part is also about the marketing for the, for the area of being a real hub of higher education. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you put all these schools together, as you said, it's 20,000 some odd students. That's a major, major university. But people don't think of it that way. They don't think of it holistically. They right. think of each institution, which is the way it's always has been. This is like changing the entire thought process and going, wait a minute, with all of us combined, we're here so close together. Why not think of it as one multiversity, if you will? Uh, uh, Don, um, uh, you know, there are some parallels to your time up at Mount Holyoke. There was, um, you know, there's a partnership up there, could you speak to, is, was that just something different or um, does anything that you learned, um, you know, from your prior experience as uh, provost up at Mount Holyoke and the partnership arrangements up there, is that sort of transferable lessons learned and knowledge from, from that? Well, I was at an institution, Mount Holyoke, that was a member of the Five College Consortium, right. which is a very successful consortium. There's a couple of others in the country too. The Claremonts, Claremont, there's, yes. and there's also within the 128 belt in in um, Boston. There's quite a good collaboration between a number of schools there. It's one in Georgia, um, and when you look here, um, there's there's actually um, in terms of closeness and um, cultural surroundings in this area. Um, there's there's more upside in some ways. Um, we haven't formally collaborated, but there's no reason we can't do what's been done in five colleges, in, um, in, in the Claremonts, but do it better in, in many ways. So I, I think there's tremendous potential. No one thinks of this area as a haven for um, young people, and, it, 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 and that's a shame because we have lots of them. Now, what a lot of, I think, students are looking for, and especially, you know, the, the pressures of our modern times are just beyond the classroom, some real world experiences, some, um, a little bit more hope in terms of that, uh, that transition from college to the real world in terms of getting a job. Um, does some of the synergy in the C4 help with that, or is that more sort of uh, just sort of your separate outreach and job placement and career opportunity program? I think every place that you uh, are able to put your students for classes, uh, you're going to wind up creating connections with the community. We focus on it very hard in St. Petersburg, of course, where our home campus is and in Tampa. But uh, the opportunity to have our students down here to become familiar with the riches, the uh, cultural riches of the uh, Sarasota area is going to be terrific for uh, internships, eventually for job placements. We already work uh, on an informal basis with the uh, uh, Ringling Museum. Uh, for some of those opportunities on our uh, museum studies and our art history program, and we're looking forward to extending that here in Sarasota. I think that uh, I mean, as the incoming chair of the Bradenton Area Economic Development Corporation, oh, I, I think yeah. a, a real key week. part of this is what we can um, brand as a consortium collectively, what we can do is going to attract many more businesses to look at this area if we are a college town because there's that ready-made pool of, uh, of great talent in this area. So I think the effect will 
bring business here, will create the jobs, will be sort of the catalyst that will bring even more students to the area and it will build upon itself. No, I think that's a good point. I think that one of the earlier questions is sort of the branding with respect to students, but branding with respect to the employment community, branding with respect to the rest of the world, is, 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 I think that's key as well. Uh, have there been any pilot programs that you're sort of getting started? Slow? Can anybody share some experiences to date? How are things going with cross-registration and things like yeah, that? Yeah, we've, um, uh, the cross-registration is, um, you can imagine with six institutions, sort of a uh, And they don't all charge the same amount. That's a what registrar's mean. nightmare, okay? Yeah. Um, and uh, and the, I think they just sort of threw their hands up when they heard the presidents were trying to do this. Um, but yes, we've had some some students who have piloted. We've had some new college students who have taken courses at at Ringling, and then we also have had some Ring, uh, some Ringling students take some courses at New College. And I think you also had some students take it at State College of Florida and USF Sarasota Manatee, right? So yeah, we've had some pilots. I mean, there were some glitches because it was brand new. We didn't have a process developed. But that's one of the things that happened is that the foundations here, three of the foundations got together and, and collaborated in order to help this consortium actually hire an initiative manager to be able to help us get through those kinds of processes. So it's a collaboration on a collaboration in terms of making this whole thing work. I'd like to also mention other types of collaborations that we've done here is, uh, for one, we brought all the universities together to talk about emergency management mm -hmm. and to really be trained on different scenarios that could occur within our community here. And that's a way uh, for us to sort of build on this, uh, this mass of individuals here that all uh, have the same challenges in the case of having to close down during a hurricane operation or where are we going to relocate our students or where are we going to relocate our services in the event of other types of uh, emergencies. I think also our, some of our faculty members have started to do some collaboration and look at how they could do research together and how they could strengthen their own curricula um, and that's been very exciting for at least I know the, the faculty members at our school and our students have started to do some things together. They've had some shared events. So it's been a nice collaboration across the board. If this goes as, you know, as well as you hope, what will it look like five years from now? Anybody can. Do you want to take that? I think we're going to have groups of faculty who collaborate on having uh, national associations meet in this area because we've got six institutions that are supporting the same disciplines. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have faculty in the STEM areas that are collaborating on research in uh, new and more powerful ways than they can do now. And I think we're going to have students who are, feel much more like they're ambassadors for this whole part of Florida rather than from one, one, one area. I think it's all going to be great for the community. I, I think also we're going to see the emergence of a university of the future, a multiversity, um, where um, You've got institutions with very different missions, with very different strengths, and you have students finding their own path um, through this really rapidly changing time, um, picking up various pieces with the advice. And I think we'll have um, uh, each of those institutions is managed and does what it does best, but the student has unparalleled, I think, opportunities, and I think this will be a model nationally. Many of those other consortia we talked about, they're very similar institutions. These are ones with, with quite different strengths, and um, the, they open things for our students and our faculty that I think um, promise a great deal. So five years, I think, will be, um, uh, people will be pointing here. Um, and Larry, let me actually, specifically on the North Trail here, I've been a faculty member, it's my 13th year, um, at New College of Florida, and I think I recall right after I got here, uh, there was sort of hope that uh, whether it be through New College or some kind of collaborations informally before the discussions of the C4 took part, that we would revitalize this area, revitalize the, the, the trail. And for the most part, that, that hasn't happened. Do you think there is potential, um, again, if uh, you know, this, a stronger commitment to working together and branding uh, collectively this area that it could have some, some meaningful local uh, impacts on both the economy and the community around it. I, I firmly believe it can have a major impact. We, 
as, as sort of the um, the old guy here um, who's been around for a while, um, we did have a whole initiative to try to to try to rebrand the North Trail and then also to develop it as more like a college town kind of place, you know, with bookstores and galleries and so on and so forth along it. And I, that's still the dream. But now I think with the with this effort, because this is a much, much stronger collaboration than ever, ever before. And hopefully with the help of the city and the county, um, both counties, that we'll be able to help make the North Trail a much more vibrant place. It's going to take a lot of time because as colleges, we can't just develop it ourselves but we have to have a lot of partners to make that happen. But it will allow, because of the strength of these institutions, it to be noticed so that, so that the, the necessary parts, including the new businesses that Carol mentioned, that will be coming here to really look at this area in order to develop this North Trail, because they want to be close to these higher education institutions in order for them to be connected as well. Uh, and Carol, can you just talk a little bit about some of the community foundation support. And I wouldn't mind if that were a lead in, um, you know, there's going to be you know, time, money and effort on the part of the, the six institutions here with respect to making things work. But uh, you know, what other help do you think you need either from, you know, the philanthropic community, the community writ large, the state, you know, what can the rest of Florida do to help make this work? Well, thank you. That's a great question. We're, we've been very fortunate to have the support of the Baransic Foundation, the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, and the Sarasota Community Foundation uh, to bring our initiative manager to us to help us really kind of focus ourselves on the goals that we want to accomplish in the near term and then look towards sustainability in the long term. Um, obviously, this is you know, we, we all are very committed to this. So we think it's an, an outstanding um, opportunity to pen this multiversity, as Don refers to, but ultimately it has to be self-sustaining. But to get there, we're going to need some help. When we look at putting all the pieces and parts in place for our cross-registration, we're probably going to be needing some additional help to bring those parts together, at least initially. Um, and ultimately, we think you know there are things that we can do together in terms of grants mm -hmm. um, that we would be seeking to help us with innovation, innovation for this area, and innovation across our institutions to bring new programs to bear that maybe is a program that a little bits and pieces of that particular program at all of our institutions. So we're always going to need the support, but the long-term goal is that we need to be sustainability. Dr. Sustainable. I would also say that I think as, as we grow and we develop more of uh, an identity as a multiversity, as Larry says, uh, that you know, we'll work closer with the business community and also get business support, too, because they will start to see that we can provide uh, a much stronger workforce for them with students being able to cross over and uh, strengthen their skills, broaden their skill base. And so I hope that we can start to then be more integrated with the business community as a group and develop programming that fits right into the economic development plans for the larger community. I think there's a chance for some uh, for some financial help from the state, because this should be a model mm -hmm. for state universities, state colleges, and private institutions all working together. There's nothing like this in Florida, and it's a way of actually helping to save resources um, for the state and also for the students in, in terms of what they're paying in tuition. Okay, I got a big question for you. It sort of hasn't been previewed, and I'm actually going to relax the. Uh, the C4 part of it, but uh, feel free to pull that in. I think you're getting at it with some of your answers. But what I'd like to hear from each of you, if you could just briefly comment on how do you see the atmosphere, the environment for higher education in this country and in this state changing uh, over the last few years and creating some challenges for you. How are you as your institutions responding uh, uh, to that? And then, you know, if there's some way that this C4, and I think you've kind of cut it, you got at that already, but, you know, how is the world changing around you right now? Um, and how, how are you dealing with that? It doesn't have to be connected to the C4. Yeah, Dr. Eastman. Well, higher education is under uh, great scrutiny all over the, all over the country partly for the uh, enormous amount of financial expense required to put students through college, either from uh, public sources or from private sources. So student debt is a very high issue. And I think that uh, 
we have to do better what we do in order to justify that cost. We've had our student body comes from all over the country in uh, 45 states, um, and it's just undergraduate education. Mm -hmm. So it's a very high touch, personal kind of uh, education. Uh, I think this uh, consortium, though, will help both with cost issues so we don't have to grow ourselves. We can take advantage of space that, that they can give us to let our students uh, uh, study, and we can do the same, of course. Uh, but it's also going to give us extra strength. We're not just going to be uh, uh, the private liberal arts college in Florida. We're going to be the, the liberal arts college that has this kind of uh, added opportunity, added attraction because of our, our connections with these institutions. We have connections already, uh, but they're mostly with, uh, with graduate institutions. So we have uh, medical engineering operations with, uh, with Florida and uh, for our students, opportunities for to go to study law at FSU and Stetson and that sort of thing. But in terms of undergraduate education, this is pretty unique. I think it's going to be really powerful for us. Thank you, Dr. Eastman. Dr. O'Shea? I'll answer this from a new college point of view, sort of. But um, two of the strengths of American <coughs> excuse me, higher education have been its diversity and have it been its willingness to postpone narrow professional education till after um, a solid um, undergraduate education. New College um, exists, though, to provide that solid undergraduate education and help students um, think about what it is they love, what it is they're good at, and what will make a difference in this world. But increasingly, they um, also want to walk out of college with a job or some help there. This consortium will really help there. They'll be able to do both what's really strong at New College, but they may be able to pick up a Microsoft Programmers mm -hmm. uh, certificate while doing that, or um, an education degree, or some specialized knowledge in um, in art, in art and digital design, um, or um, Arabic, um, and um, we can't do that alone. And this sort of um, will be able to do this. So. In the higher education environment for my institution, two things that have really influenced us in the last several years is the new competition that we have, particularly with for-profit competitors, mm -hmm. and what that means for us in terms of competing in that market, um, and also accountability. And we all want to be held accountable. We mm -hmm. all want to create the best opportunities we can for our students. But coming up with that definition of accountability that incorporates quality has been very difficult Easier said and I think than done. <laughs> has eluded most of us, most state measuring systems included. And so it, it creates a challenge to make sure that we're focused on our mission, we're focused on doing what's best for, for our students while still trying to chase those uh, external influences that we're dealing with. Dr. Tom. In terms of um, the larger picture of higher education, it's, it's, a, it's a couple of things that people have already mentioned, but one of them is the financial model, um, especially the tuition model for private colleges, is just not sustainable. It's, it is so difficult um, to, to uh, have an institution, and run an institution, with respect to the costs of it, and then what you have to charge and what the students have to pay. Mm -hmm. that, that is just sort of unconscionable, and it's very, very difficult. So um, that, that is a big, big, big challenge that, that exists for students to be able to have um, the accessibility um, to the institution. But what happens is that students will pay and will come to an institution of the highest quality. And that's the thing about these institutions sitting here, the six of them, they're all very high quality, which means in that consortium, we will be an even bigger draw. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Stone. I think probably two of the most pressing issues in higher ed right now are resources and the dwindling of public support and uh, relevance and a real need for students to feel like what they're doing is relevant and, and is going to help them move on with their careers and their lives. So I think by working together we can address both those issues and particularly the resource issue. We don't each have to have every single program that anybody could possibly want, but together we have a, a really nice array. So it keeps us from having to duplicate and we can then focus on those things that each of us has as unique strengths. 
So I think that's helpful. And um, for those of us in the public sector, we're a bargain here in Florida. So Indeed. I think just trying to keep that up front and center. And then for relevance, again, uh, by offering a broader array, I think students have more options to, to choose what they might like to pursue. And again, it, it helps people be able to stay local if they want to, and they have a lot more choices. Thank you. And coming at it from a museum perspective as opposed to a higher education perspective, uh, there are, uh, you know, the economic models are changing for sustainability of museums. And uh, we're much more reliant on private and uh, earned income support in order to maintain our operations government support overall has decreased over the years and so it's about trying to be as uh, you know entrepreneurial as possible as an institution to be able to find new areas new markets in which to uh, both uh, gain capital uh, gain income but also to excite and and uh, uh, our, our private donors and to get them excited about what we're doing and what the impact of what we're doing is having to the community. Our role here within this consortium is benefit, benefiting us through this connection with these great uh, colleges that we have here in our community. At the same time, uh, we hope that we're also reinforcing the importance of, of art and culture and uh, beauty uh, that we that we provide in our in our campuses. Thank you, uh, Mr. High. I really enjoyed your answers to that last question, Dr. High. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm glad I asked the question. Um, the powers that be have given me the signal that we're uh, out of time. Uh, so I'd like to thank each of you individually, Dr. High, Dr. Stone, Dr. Thompson, Dr. Protzfield, Dr. O'Shea, Dr. Eastman. Uh, I'd like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in, and we'll see you on another edition of Focus One.